Hello, I'm Ryan Bones. So, um, my, my CR project is um, making a skill-based matchmaking system. Now, skill-based matchmaking systems are frequently used in video games so that people that are of different skill levels may be matched into games that are of people of similar skill levels themselves. And this is what my CR project is today. So for my CR project, um, my, my goals include um, wanting to make sure that the environment that is created is competitive and that people that are that the similar skill of our place together. Um, over time, as a person improves or gets worse, um, depending on how they play, they'll, they'll um, automatically adjust them um, into different skill levels based off their matching performance over time. But I also want to create incentives to make sure that um, players are able to um, they are able to play with less frustration. So if anything may cause them to get frustrated with the games, like such as playing against players that are way too difficult for them, that it will um, that it will try to mediate those um, frustrations to um, make sure that they can have a fun experience. Um, I also want to prevent abuses that can happen where we we'll could actually manipulate such a system and. So our system that I've been in place, I'd like to avoid possible abuses for those. So as far as rank distribution, um, since each player will be assigned a rank based off their skill, um, we, we should have a bell curve such as this here, as you see. And we should have it where the average player should be here in the center. And as as um the players that are more skilled we refer to the, the right. And people who are not quite as good will be over to the left. So, so um, here's here's the thing about making a ranking system. Um, players often take pride within their ranks, so they will brag about their friends about the rank that they've achieved. So, if you, for example, reach the rank diamond or champion, then a lot of times those players will like to brag with their friends, saying that they that they reach that level of achievement. If someone is at a lower rank, people tend to, in gaming communities, insult each other. And I would like to make the process a little bit easier for people to um, feel like they're in a good rank or they have good lobbies, but make it where the process of, of um, improving and continuing to play to improve is easier for them without making it too easy. So here's an example from Ubisoft of, of the rank distribution. And um, there, there are some, some things about this list I would like to dive in deeper. So in August 2018, um, this is a graph of the rank distribution for Ubisoft Montreal's Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. And inside of here, you do see some anomalies where there are certain ranks that are a bit higher than others, instead of having our bell curve that we're so desiring. So if you look at a game called League of Legends, which I've got this is a side since so go nuts. <laughs> when we look at um, League of Legends, we see the same thing as well, but to a more extreme degree. So what's going on? Well, one thing that I've found um, talking to other players, as well as my own experience, is that once you achieve a rank that, that you've been trying to achieve for a long time, oftentimes players will stop playing and then just play in the casual playlist so that um, they can maintain that rank, even though they barely have the skill necessary to have achieved it. Instead of continuing to play and gain more skill to go further along, They'll end up stop, they'll end up um, no longer playing just to keep that rank. And that is something that I would like to address. Now, um, so, since I'm trying to, to avoid um, de ranking, I want to um, well, so I want to avoid um, players being frustrated. I want to make the process of losing and de ranking to be less punishing. And I want to create incentives for, for players to continue playing. But I also want to maintain a competitive environment while keeping these in mind. So Ubisoft Montreal decided to tackle this issue 
to increase their engagement. But, but um, the thing is, um, that in the process of doing it, they decided to create a different system than what Microsoft's true skill matchmaking system was. So Microsoft's true skill matchmaking, players are ranked in this fashion here from left to right, highest and lowest. Well, Ubisoft Montreal decided that if they were to create two different systems where, where your actual skill rank is hidden from you, as you see down bottom, and the rank that appears on your profile is on top, then, then um, you'll be able to um, have a different rank than what your skill level is, but it should increase engagement. And over time, the rank should eventually get in sync after a while. So they introduced a system that makes it where if you, if you de-rank, uh, well, if you're about to be rank, um, you'll get one grace period before you actually lose your rank, which, which um, theoretically would cause problems with Microsoft's true skill matchmaking. But I'm willing to actually create a method that will actually um, that will actually handle that. So this is the ideal rank distribution that we want. And then we look at Ubisoft's data with their rank 2.0 system. We get this. That is not about Earth. Um, so we see that over here in number five, the lowest rank possible, um, we have a staggering 13% of the entire player base within that area. And the thing is, if you lose, if you lose your first match and stop playing, that's where you will be. If you um, if, if you were to win one game you automatically move past this to the second bar you see here. So this tells me that a large proportion of the community is not, not playing very long. So I wanted to create a solution that would um, fix these issues, but without the problems of Ubisoft's um, rank 2.0 matching system. So it will be similar to um, Microsoft's true skill matching system. However, I want the back end of the algorithm to be completely different while having similar out outputs. But the outputs that are, that are actually on process would be a little bit different to avoid player frustration. So in the process of deranking, if you lose 75 points, you end up losing your rank automatically and you'll be adjusted to where it makes sense just simply literally um, decreasing your score. But my solution will be where if you're going to be rank, it'll pause and it will stop you right there and you have and they'll give the players one that's your chance to 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 um, keep their rank. Otherwise it'll derank in the, in the next game build and they will lose the same amount as they would otherwise. So here's the Ubisoft system. Here's Microsoft's true skill system. But using a system like Microsoft's true skill, um, it will cause um, rank inflation over time if you were to forgive losses like that. So my solution is to move the starting point further back. So then over time, as they increase, um, increase their, their, their um, number of wins and losses, it won't be too much of a gain over time, and they'll still be able to um, to rank up, but they won't rank up too quickly. Nor, if they were to have an even win and loss ratio, they shouldn't be um, increasing rank over time. I've also made it where um, they'll disable the, the forgiveness system after 100 matches to avoid this rank inflation. So, from the results from, from my system, this is the rank distribution. Now, provided I've only done a limited, limited sample since I just got this working last night. But um, the, after about 20 minutes of processing, um, I believe it was 1,000 squads over the course of, um, or 500 squads over the course of um, 1,000 matches. This is, these are the results that I had. So if we look, if we dive deeper, and we actually expand the, the ranks by uh, 100 um, skill points, we do see that there are um, some discrepancies with the, 
but the um, bars are really high and this is the bars that are low in each rank. For example, um, this is a single rank, this is a single rank, but those discrepancies is actually due to the um, forgiveness system. But whenever we look at the ranks as a whole, we see that bow curve. So as far as abuses, there's one common abuse that is called boost. So right here you see an example of two teams that are perfectly evenly matched. So, and you'll see that um, each player have their ranks and down here at the bottom are the ranks that, they, that, that there are that they can possess. So how, how do um, you abuse a matching system? Well, the, the place where you are put is based off the average um, MMR skill of all the players. So if this player, if this team wanted to um, say, take alternate accounts and right down to the absolute lowest rank, they could boost their friend up to the highest rank. And this could mean that they could queue against a very um, low skilled team and they could easily um, get each of their friends to the highest rank possible while going against um, players who are some of the worst in the community. This is not very fun for teams that come into this. And a lot of times, um, video games will actually make it where you cannot play with people with, that are outside a certain range. But the problem is that you can't link your friends. So how do you address this? Well, if you take the highest player and subtract, say, 700 from their score, and then substitute um, the, the, um, the skill rating for the, the four players in this example, um, the, 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 skill, the skill level for, for them, for the average track location, is going to assume that they're trying to cheat the system. It's going to give them a team that is um, currently at the, at, di at the diamond level, which is towards the top. So if they are some of the best players in the community, but they're using ultra accounts, um, they'll, um, they'll think they're trying to cheat. But, but the other side would be just not allowing them to play at all which means that friends be alienated from their other friends in their groups. So with a matchmaking system, you have to put teams um, together. So how, how do you do this? Well, my system um, has squads ranging from one to five people for a five player team, but here's a very simplified version of that using just single players. So the person that is way in line for the longest, that's what this, um, this top bar is, um, we're going to add them to a team. And then we see the team average is 2,500. The range is 200 plus or minus. And if a player fits within that range, they're going to be added to the team. And then as a result, the um, team average is going to change, thus updating the range. So it's going to go through and it's going to see who actually um, Will fit on the team. So that 5,000 player actually is not fit. Here is this person. And it's going to scroll through your list as it's searching for people to add of, of um, the right skill level. So um, as you get to this person right here, we see that they actually do fit on the team. And it updates the average and updates the range. So what do we do now? Well, we can keep on going down the list. However, because um, because I'll prioritize players that are later that have been waiting um for less time, it will actually start over so that the people who have been waiting in line for the longest um have a chance to get queued with the with the new um range. So as it goes along, it's going to um keep on searching for a player, and once there's a player that um actually Fits onto the team, it's going to add them. But here's a unique situation where we've gone through all the players in line and no one has been added to the team. The team still has two slots open. What do we do? Well, if we increase the range, matchmaking will be a little bit less accurate, but it'll slowly increase the, the, um, the size that you can be at, um, that you're allowed to be put onto the team. Now, the realistic scenario is going to be um, 
my least ranked system, I have it set to increments of 15 points instead of 200. But for sake of example, to make it simpler, um, I have it by hundreds. So then it's going once again, be searching for players. So if there's a player that gets to add to the team. So then we're going to update the, the team average. And then it's going to update the range. Now it just has to search for the last player. How does Frank get through this? Let's try update the range. They may keep too many slides. Mm -hmm. So now we actually have our team. So here's my program actually running the, the, the simulation. And this actually took me, um, a, the simulation actually was 20 minutes long. And I didn't want to um, have you guys waiting for 20 minutes for the simulation. But what this is simulating is actually the, the player's um, skill level, as you see the players in, in player MR, as well as the, the, the um, change in level over time. And this will also factor in win streaks and losing streaks and games played, as well as many other statistics to, to decide um, how they should be placed in skill level. So when this process is finished, it will give us the stats of everyone within 100 point increments. And here is the bar graph. So this is the bar graph that you saw earlier. So yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you. For a question, if anybody's got a question. Uh, in your simulation, like how are you determining like which team wins and which team loses? So I actually do have um, a function that will um, determine based off how much the average MR of the team is. So if you actually, um, if, if you're within a certain range, such as um, I believe the number I use is 200, if you're within that range, it's going to be, um, actually maybe less, but it's going to um, be 50-50 chance of, of you winning. Um, if one team is more skilled than the other, the chances are actually going to be a little bit higher in favor of the team that is a higher skill level on average. And it'll go all the way through to a 90% win rate if one team is especially higher than the other. I wanted to make a simulation that actually would simulate each individual game, but I didn't have time to do that. And plus, that would also take a lot of system resources mm -hmm. to do, especially with the large data pool size. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you.